Met Helmets have just opened their very own wind tunnel, and it's called the Tube. And I'm here to find out why. What do they plan to gain, and how do they plan on doing it? To find out more, I'm going to head inside. Right, to the tunnel. Met Helmets can be seen as one of the fastest in the world of pro racing. And that's no surprise when you have the likes of Tade Pogacar wearing one and winning almost every race he starts. Met is a family-run company and was founded in 1987, making it one of the oldest bike-specific helmet companies out there. Which might not sound very old, but don't forget helmets only became compulsory in bike racing back in 2003. But the reason for my visit is to find out why Met have invested so much resource into this facility. Previously on GCN Tech. Ollie visited Metz HQ to see how helmets were made, see the design process, and to conduct some crash testing. And that was absolutely fascinating to see behind the scenes, if not slightly brutal, but it highlighted why helmet safety is of paramount importance. Now, the reason for my visit is to see this. The Met Helmets Wind Tunnel, a facility that has been years in the making and Met believe is going to help them to remain at the forefront of helmet design. Because while we're all aware that safety is of paramount importance, we're recently starting to see helmets used as more of a performance tool. Now, yes, we've known this for a number of years, but more recently, it's really stepped up a gear. To help get me up to speed and explain what's going on, I'm speaking to Matteo Tenney, who has met senior engineer with 24 years of experience in the bike helmet industry. Okay, right, first thing we need to discuss is why have you guys built a wind tunnel and how are you starting to use that? Yeah, we started uh, uh, considering having a big wind tunnel because uh, it's a part that is completing the design process for our project for Hawaii Elements. It's from the day one, Matt has an internal laboratory for making impact testing. Uh, somehow, even before uh, the first uh, certification standard were released a lot, very long time ago. And uh, nowadays, uh, along early 2000, we introduced the virtual CAD design, virtual modeling, uh, finite element calculation, so we predict uh, the response of the impacts through computer analysis. We also introduced the uh, internal management of uh, 3D printing, mm -hmm. so it was completing the design process. So it was pretty natural to consider having this device that was able to complete the validation of the performance of the product. When Met are testing their helmets, the crucial part is that the rider's body position and helmet design work together. But long before that stage, helmets are tested in isolation for both aerodynamic efficiency and to assess the cooling performance. And these tests use a particularly high-tech metal head form. His head is able to measure the drag performance of the single helmet mm -hmm. as a standalone element. So yeah. we put the helmet on the head here. We have the, the scales that are measuring uh, the load given by the airflow that is catching from the front, the head together with the helmet. So those are three scales in the three main directions. And this head can be rotated accordingly, jaw angle or an angle in, front, in, the, in the way of front back to mimic the position of the head during riding. Another situation is the validation of uh, how the airflow works inside the helmet. Obviously, this is most, the most important in the validation of the thermal analysis. This reduces the heat inside the head. Technically speaking, is an head form that has inside there, under the surface, uh, 32 uh, thermal points. So we measure the temperature wow. actually in 32 points. And by zone or by average value, we can calculate how the temperature is dropping down in relation to the airflow. The entry temperature is typically between 37 and 38 uh, Celsius degrees. Mm -hmm. And from that point, we calculate uh, how is the theoretical reduction of the, of the temperature because uh, the temperature uh, or the eating of the head is, uh, uh, is stopped. Mm -hmm. And we calculate 
how it's really the drop down. You, ha you have a graph yeah. in which you have the time, the temperature, and point by point, you can understand which points are working pretty well yeah, and which other are needing to be better optimized. Now, when it comes to the actual testing process, things are very similar to lots of different wind tunnels. So the items being tested, such as the bike, the rider, and of course the helmet, is placed on this platform here. And it's known as the balance. And then a huge fan draws air past the rider at a carefully measured rate, and then the amount of force or drag which is applied to the rider is measured by the balance. Now you've got a number of different cameras here which are monitoring the riding position and also enabling them to calculate the area of the rider. Then when you combine this information together, you get that magic CDA number, which is able to then be compared against different test setups. Now, bringing this testing in-house gives METS engineers far more opportunities to regularly test their designs and ideas and then head back upstairs and make any necessary tweaks and adjustments before coming back down to complete more testing. Now, while I'm here, I'm going to be conducting a bunch of different testing. So if you want to see videos about that, well, subscribe to GCN Tech and then turn on your notifications because I'm going to be looking at lots of different factors in preparation for my upcoming race at Unbound. Now, also to highlight the difference in helmet designs and styles, I'm also going to now test four different types of helmet. So to the testing. The helmets I'm testing represent a broad range of styles that MET offer rather than trying to compare similar styles. So first up was the Vibe On with its integrated visor. The Vibe On. A commuter style helmet rather than a performance product. Then we tested the Trenta. The Trenta. Which is MET's vented performance helmet. Followed by the Codatronca. The Codatronca. A short nose time trial helmet. And then finally, a helmet that Met kindly dug out from the archive, the Stradivarius from 2006. Now having tested these helmets on a basic level, let's discuss the results. Firstly, helmet choice is always gonna be specific to rider position and riding speeds when you're trying to optimize for performance. And Matteo also explains that my test sample of one at one speed and one yaw angle is a very, very basic test, and Met's usual process takes considerably longer than what would have been possible in my visit. So, in my usual position on my gravel bike, the difference in power required to ride at 40 kilometers an hour with the different helmets are as follows. Vibe on with a visor up, 268.1 watts. The Vibe on with a visor down, 265.7. The Trenta with glasses, 264.5. Codatronca, 259.7. The Stradivarius with glasses, 268.4. Now that's 8.7 watts difference between the slowest to fastest helmet that we tested. But what I found most interesting was that the modern urban commuter helmet was more aerodynamically efficient than the performance road helmet from 2006 by 0.3 watts. Hopefully that gives you an idea of how helmet design can have a significant impact on performance, but I'd like to find out more about what the future of helmet design holds and how the impact of the wind tunnel is affecting that. Having this kind of device here, we are expecting to have uh, some more evaluation in terms of additional performances, uh, starting from the, the ventilation that is for any kind of helmet, or arriving to super high performance products like the, the drone number two that uh, is used by today and other pro athletes. The future of the helmets will be, will be related to uh, the necessity of then in terms of collection to go in depth into each category since actually there are some families that were not so wide into our collection in the past years. Well, gravel is the first example. Yeah. Uh, if, I'm if I'm thinking about uh, uh, first experiences, my first experiences here at MET, we are talking about more than 20 years ago, gravel did not exist. The differences among the, the products in the collection will be uh, creating more dedicated products. Okay, so, so you think more, we're gonna see more specific helmets to certain yeah, applications? Exactly. 
More often than not, when we think about aerodynamics, we think about it in terms of pure speed. But careful helmet design is not only crucial for pure speed, but also cooling as well. And typically, it's about striking a balance between the two. So I want to find out how Met decide what's the perfect balance for each different type of helmet model they make. Cooling is affecting of aerodynamic and vice versa. Yeah. It's super important uh, to understand the location of the vents and how the vents are working. Uh -huh. Because uh, a vent that is uh, uh, creating a hole in the wrong place can create a detachment of the airflow and so local turbulence. And so again, we are affecting that number that is given by the, the drag. On the other hand, it's also true that uh, uh, a very good channeling inside that is allowing uh, an optimal uh, ventilation inside the helmet is also affecting positively on the drag. So that's that's interesting. Naturally, you think of optimizing the external structure, but by changing the shapes inside, you can maximize cooling and aerodynamics still. Yeah, absolutely right. People that are maybe not involved in uh, product development for cycling helmets are thinking, yeah, somehow when you, are, you have completed the design outside, 99% of the, pro the project is done. Actually, it's not the case because the interiors are helping, firstly, in driving the cracking of the helmet during an impact in the way in which we want the helmet is cracking and so is able to dissipate the energy during an impact. So like carefully controlling that dissipation yeah, of yeah. energy. Sometimes really it, 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 it's uh, maybe rough to, to be said, but removing material, so taking away some material, is allowing the helmet to do better during an impact. Okay, that makes sense. So people are maybe thinking the opposite and say, oh, no, 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 don't take house because otherwise you are you're destroying the helmet that yeah. I want. It's destroyed accordingly a controllable way. Yeah. So that's the, the important difference between just removing material or removing and optimizing structure. Yeah. Considering uh, the experience of, of wind tunnel testing and thermal analysis, uh, it's even more important to have an efficient design internally because uh, you can create really a very efficient flow of the air inside so all those small cells are giving positive response yeah. from, uh, from the testing. And at the same time, uh, the connection between the front and the back, uh, talking about uh, ventilation on uh, uh, road helmets, but also mountain bike helmets, because in the end we are talking about a situation in which the speed is not helping, yeah. because the air is almost steady yeah. there. So you easily understand why the internal design is so important, as well as the aesthetic design outside is uh, pretty nice at yeah. the same time. <laughs> no, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> so, final bit of a fun question I want to ask you actually is, I think we've all seen it, Tali Pogaccia with his hair poking out the top of the helmet. <laughs> now, is this something that you guys have actually managed to test? Has it got an impact on performance? Yeah, we, we will... Uh try different hairstyles from today. Yeah. So we ask him to come here with long <laughs> ears, shorter ears. So, <laughs> yeah. so of course, it's, a, it's something that would be interesting to be evaluated. So you've not <laughs> tested it yet? Yeah, but he's so powerful that probably he's balancing yeah. one or two centimeter of long ear, more or less. <laughs> yeah, no, that's perfect. That's a great way to win this. Thanks very much for your time, man. I appreciate that. All right, thank you. Thank you. So there you go, that was fascinating to see and has given some really good insight behind the scenes as to how Met are using wind tunnels to help optimize their next generation of helmet designs. Now, as a self-confessed bike tech nerd, I absolutely love seeing this kind of stuff and all the innovation that comes with it. However, when it comes to extreme designs and time trial helmets being used in road races, Mm, I'm not too sure how I feel about that kind of stuff. So get involved in the comments section down below and share your thoughts on the subject. And if you have enjoyed this video and found it informative and helpful, please share it far and wide with all of your friends to see. And of course, hit that like button. Right, I'm out of here. See you later.